Okay, we have now some painted parts and some new brake parts. So we can start the car uh, both in the rear and the front with double A arms and new brake line there as well. Okay, here we have one problem when I should uh, make the engine go in the wrong direction. Of course, the starter will not work uh, backwards. Um, and it's not easy to switch the, the polarity because it's grounded to the chassis. So I think there might be two ways to do it. Uh, either way, you uh, reverse the polarity on the stator side. Uh, and if I'm lucky, we can just take the outer part and turn it uh, 45 degrees or maybe it was a half a turn and uh, put it together again. I think it was 45 degrees. And by then we have solved the direction of it. But of course you have the bandix uh, up here and that will not work in backwards because it's in the twisted spline that will only work in one way and that we can solve by using the starter from a sub 93 that have a straight cut gear and uh, well we have the same problem with the Bendix gear uh, but I think we somehow can just turn it upside down and that will solve the problem. We'll see. We start to disassemble them. Okay, I have now changed the polarity of the stator winding. So hopefully now it will go in the other direction. The arrow on the starter tells me it will go that way. But now I will reveal it so it will go on the other direction. A quick update of the project. The lines for the brakes is pretty much done. And the engine is in place. lines for the brakes and the uh, reducers for the back wheel must be so and the master clutch cylinder going up to the slave cylinder and we have the gear linkage for the transmission starting with the beautiful knob uh, made by my father-in-law according to my design ideas very nice okay when i put the cylinder head onto the engine block i tied it down with uh, only 30 newton meters and after that i will now turn every bolt uh, 90 degrees further then after uh, some warm driving I will tighten it down another 20 degrees uh, two times but now 90 degrees in the 
special order. So. First one. number 12. That will be all. No, that was not all. I forgot number 11 and number 12. So, number 11. Number twelve. There we go. Now it's done. And for the next twenty degrees, I will use a big wrench. Okay, as you seen in the film earlier, there was some smoke coming right there. Uh, and I wonder why, uh, but I have now cleaned it and I have tightened that nut. I think that might be the, the biggest problem I had. Hopefully it will not smoke this time, we we'll see. Beautiful. That's working good. Now we can continue. All the painted parts is now on the car and the brakes is assembled and now it's working. I had some uh, problem with the master brake cylinder. I had to rebuild it that a couple of times before I got it to work, but now it's working. And the shiny new wheels or refurbished wheels. Uh, I got the battery in place. And now I have also the fuel line uh, ready assembled. And uh, attach uh, the requirement is maximum 200 millimeters between the fasteners, and uh, I now have less than that. I made a dashboard, but I have to redo that because that was not. Uh, according to my quality <laughs> if I have one and I have now begin with the electrical system uh, it's a sub 96 that I uh, more or less have turned upside down but uh, of course I I don't need the wire for the fan or to the 
wiper motor, so I will remove that. Okay, it's time for a bigger update on the build. As you can see, I have made some progress with the red dashboard, with all the gauges. And I have done pretty much all the electrical. It will be tied, tidied up lately, later, but um, we will have it functional first. And I have got my body to the garage, so I will soon mount that rear end as well, uh, first. Uh, and I have done the, the most of the plumbing, the, the cooling system. Uh, with an expansion chamber from, from the Sub-99 the was think the one from the 96 will not work as I thought it should be uh, but I have one problem that's inside there but first I will show you this one this is the gear from uh, the starter motor with the uh, bendix wheel that will free float in one direction and drive the axle in the other uh, and uh, because this engine is moving the the other direction than it normally does uh, I had to cut this one uh, both on uh, that side and that side and 
turn this one all around 180, 180 degrees and I weld it together again uh, to make it work otherwise it's just spinning and not uh, connecting to the flywheel so that is working now but back to that one in this gearbox it has it has also a free wheel because it's a two stroke it doesn't like to be uh, in the engine brake because when you engine brake the engine it will not have any fuel and if it doesn't have any fuel it doesn't have any oil to lubricate it so that will be quite a disaster so in there there is a small gear or a, like a drum with a small um, rods in it that I will need to spin this one 180 degrees round to make it work uh, but to do so I have to remove the engine to split the gearbox uh, in two half but um, I have some other works to do before I can do that like uh, mount the rear end so I can move the car back so I get more space in the garage in front of the car it's fun every day <laughs> and just like I did on the starter motor I have to do on the uh, alternator I have to change the polarity of the stator uh, to make it charge the battery instead of discharge it and again it's because the engine is going backwards okay in the next uh, video we will deal with the uh, transmission issue we have and if you like the content you see in today please write a comment and uh, if it's good if, if it's not and uh, what you would like to see uh, and uh, if you like it please consider to subscribe to the channel and uh, make the thumbs up and if you doesn't like it put the thumbs down twice thank you see you next time